Welcome to my channel. I'm Arpita Karwa and in this video lecture, I'm going to talk about what are the possible career options that you have in front of you once you clear the NTA UGC NET exam. We all are aware of the fact that NET exam is becoming tough day by day. And now that students have to put so much hard work in order to clear this exam, they all must be worried about the fact that what am I going to do once I clear this exam? Why am I going to put so much effort just to clear an exam and not knowing what are the possible career options after that? So in this video, I'm going to talk about all the possible career options and I'm also going to clear a lot of your myths that you have in your mind in regards to the NTA UGC NET exam. But before I move on to that, I would like to share this amazing news with you. Last week, I participated in the Jaipur Literature Festival, which is India's most biggest literature festival. They claim that it's the biggest literature festival all over the world, but I'm not sure about what are the scenes in the other parts of the country, in other different continents. But as far as India is concerned, Z Jaipur Literature Festival is the biggest literary show in India. And I was amazed this time to listen to all these great writers. I've been visiting this festival since past 10 years and every time when the writers talk about books and literature and give their perspective about different issues, I feel so good to be in this field of literature. English literature is something which will give you so much uh, more about life. You get to understand so many philosophical things. You get to understand different concepts like what is love, what is religion, what are these gender issues that we are facing every day. It's beautiful. This time I was amazed to hear Ben Okri, we had Javi Daktar, we had Gulzar, we had Jerry Pinto, we had Devdat Patnaya and so many budding writers. So it was a beautiful uh, experience and I would really request you that if you are a literature enthusiast, then book your ticket for the next uh, JLF which is going to happen next year somewhere in the month of January. Because I'm telling you that if you come down to Jaipur, attend this festival, it is going to be a lifelong experience for you. We all are aware of the fact that if you want to become a school teacher, you need to have a BA degree. That's the minimum qualification for a school teacher. But what about college professors? If I want to become a professor in any good college, what is the minimum eligibility? And that is where UGC NET exam comes into play. So what is important for you to understand that there are three streams. We have science, commerce and humanities. The students who want to become professors in the field of science, maybe biology, chemistry, physics, they have to give an exam called CSIR NET. Whereas the students who want to become a professor in the field of humanity or in the field of uh, commerce, they have to give UGC NET exam. So both the uh, exams are almost the same. The only thing is that they have divided the streams. So for science, we have CSIR NET, whereas for commerce and for humanities, we have UGC NET. Now, what is this JRF? Now, whenever you sit for the NET exam, you fill an exam form wherein they ask you that whether you want to uh, sit for only NET or for NET and JRF both. Now, what is this JRF? NET stands for National Eligibility Test. That means once you clear this test, you are qualified to become an assistant professor. Whereas JRF stands for Junior Research Fellowship. Now, fellowship means an aid which is provided by Government of India for all those who wish to become research scholars, who wish to do research in their field. Because it is only through research and development that new ideas come on the surface and a nation progresses. So, because research scholars add a lot to the economic and the uh, educational belt, Government of India provides them aid so that they can focus on their research and not worry about the finances. So every month you are going to get about 25,000 rupees once you enroll yourself in a PhD program after you clear JR. If you look at the education chart of any student in India who is aspiring to become a professor, you will find that the student starts studying at the age of three perhaps and he enters in the kindergarten and then he starts to move forward clearing one exam by the other and then he clears his 10th board, then 12th board. After he clears his 12th board, he enters in an 
undergraduate course. Once he get his bachelor's degree, he entered in a master's program that is a postgraduate course. After he clear his postgraduate course, he give this exam net. Now, once he get his net certificate, he has got two possible career options. The first option is that he can study further. And the second option is he can directly take up a job. Now, we are going to talk about these two career options one by one. So, let's first talk about the case in which he wants to study further. Now, after he clear net, he has two things in his mind. Either he can directly dive in an MPhil program or else he can dive in a PhD program. Either you can do MPhil and then you can do PhD or you can directly take up a PhD course. Now, what is MPhil? MPhil is basically a shorter version of PhD. It is going to give you a glimpse of how PhD takes place. So, MPhil uh, takes about two years to complete, whereas PhD takes about three to four years to complete. So, MPhil is an optional thing. If you want to add another certificate, another degree in your CV, only then go for MPhil or else I would prefer you can directly enroll yourself in a PhD program. Let's talk about PhD more. Now, in case of PhD, you have two options again. Either you can enroll yourself in a full-time PhD course or you can enroll yourself in a part-time PhD course. If you wish to pursue a job simultaneously, then you should definitely go for a part-time PhD course. And if you are looking forward to become a research scholar, a very dedicated and sincere one, in that case, you can go for a full-time PhD. A full-time PhD completes in about three years, whereas a part-time PhD takes about four years to complete. Now, if you talk about PhD admissions, you need to understand that again, there are two things you must know. The first is that there are certain universities in India where they take their own test for PhD admission. So there's this entrance written test that you need to clear and only then you can sit for uh, the interview. Whereas in other cases, if you have the next certificate in your hand, you can directly proceed to the interview. So PhD admissions takes place in two uh, uh, steps. The first step is either having a net certificate or sitting for an interview and the second step is interview. Interview everybody has to face whether they have done uh, cleared their net exam or not whereas in case of written exam if you already have net certificate in your hand if you've cleared this net exam then you exempt yourself from the written test that the universities take. So in IITs or if you talk about other, several other universities they take separate entrance test even after the fact that you have net certificate in your hand. Whereas there are other universities like Delhi universities where if you have the net certificate in your hand, you can directly sit for the interview. You don't need to pass the written test. So that's how the procedure takes place. I'm going to make a full-fledged video on PhD, how to submit your application form, how to make a research proposal for PhD. I'm going to deal with all these topics separately. For now, just remember that if you clear net with JRF and you enroll yourself in a PhD program, you will be getting 25,000 per month by Government of India as a research aid. So in case you enroll yourself in a full-time PhD program and you have JRF with you, then you don't need to work anywhere else because Government of India is giving you 25,000 so that you can focus all your time and energy in PhD and not worry about the finances. So now that we have looked at PhD, it's time for me to throw some light on the second possible career option that you have in front of you once you clear this exam. And the second career option is to take up a job as an assistant professor. If you're really passionate about teaching and you have cleared this exam, you have this opportunity in front of you to apply for the post of assistant professor in any college or university across India. Net is the minimum qualification required by a candidate if he wish to sit for the interview of the post of assistant professor. But you need to also understand the fact how this interview procedure takes place. When you go and sit for the interview of the post of assistant professor, you'll find out that all the other candidates, they too have net certificate with them. So how is the panel going to decide which of them should they select? 
in that case what is important is the other additional things that you have in your CV which makes you different from the rest of the candidates. So if you have experience of attending some conferences or if you have done some research papers or if you have a job experience of about one year or two years, uh, you know, teaching somewhere, if you have a PhD with you, you, yourself or if you have uh, knowledge about your subject, you've done some additional things like MPhil, in that case, it is going to give you a leading edge in the interview. So always remember, it's not just net that is going to make you an assistant professor. There are other things that you need to add in your personality if you want yourself to, you know, portray as an assistant professor in any university or college. Also, you need to understand the fact that how you present yourself on the day of the interview is equally very important. I was a soft skill trainer and I still train a lot of people on how to face an interview, how to face a group discussion. And it is always important for you to understand that the knowledge you have in your subject, that is going to count on the day of the interview. It's not what you've mugged up for this exam. The in-depth knowledge that you have, the way you present yourself, that is going to give you an edge in this leading and competitive world. So always understand the fact that just clearing this exam is not enough. There's a lot more you need to do along with it. And that is how the beautiful journey called life begins. So there are different things you need to explore. You need to inculcate within yourself. You need to keep on learning new stuff. You need to keep on experiencing new things. And all these things will come together and will be reflected in your CV as well as in your personality. So I wish you all the best uh, for the next net exam. And I hope that this video proved beneficial. You got clarity over what all things you can do once you clear this exam. If you have any questions, any doubt, you can call on the number displayed above or you can comment in the comment section below. I'll be really, really happy to assist you in the best possible manner. Apart from that, please do subscribe to this channel. We are about to reach 1 lakh subscribers and I'm really excited to reach that big milestone. Uh, you can follow me on all the social media platforms. We are running this beautiful bonnet quiz for all you guys. Apart from that, we also post updates about the recent changes in NTA UGC net exam. So stay tuned to the channel. That's it for this video lecture. Happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpadakarwar.com.